Hey, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Staz, the Italian Stallion, a.k.a. ESPN Staz. Hey, man, we got the definition of active at AZ Way Too Active, man. I got a special guest tonight, man, a super dope artist and producer. Y'all do your research, man. He got some bangers. He got some slaps out here, man. Coming all the way from Denver, Colorado, 5280 Mystic in the building, bro. Big facts. What up? Hey, man, it's dope that you said that right, because a lot of people fuck the numbers up so bad. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Appreciate that, gang. I'm no like, doubt, man. No doubt, man. So what's good? How you been, man? I've been, you know, I've been real good. You know what I'm saying? I have a little mishaps and things, but, you know, I, I'm on a high right now, man. It's been really, really dope, man. Mm -hmm. Life is life is treating me real well right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How was Super Bowl weekend for you? You know what, bro? I ain't going to lie. I was in the studio, and I was in the house. I ain't seen nobody. Okay. <laughs> it was like it's such such. I'm not paying a hundred dollars to go to the club. I'm, yeah, I'm in the house. She was wild out there. Yeah, wild as hell. Crazy man. Super. Sheesh. It was good though, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, we glad to have you on the show, man. Uh, it's your boy Staz, man. We out here. So broke the mold, man. Oh yeah. New video out now, y'all on YouTube. Go check it out. Press play. Um, all that. Um, how'd that come about, man? What's going on with that? Um. All right, bro. So I was hungry. I was just like, I've been making songs and songs and songs, but like, I need one of them, you know? Yeah. And so like, I um, I wrote the song originally. I wrote half the song, and then I did. Man, I, all right. So, so this is weird as shit. Like, I'm in my bed, and I got like uh the Splice app where I can like find melodies and stuff. Yeah. And I'm going through the melodies on my Splice app. And it was a different sound, so I'm like, I love that sound, but I don't like the instruments they they use. So I wrote to the sound. Yeah. Went in the studio, did the beat, did the song in like 15 minutes. Really? Damn. And, and it was just like once I sent, I sent it originally to DJ K Tone and John Blaze, and they like, that's the one. You mm -hmm. know, like you got one finally. Yeah. I kind of felt defended because I'm like, finally, what the fuck? You? <laughs> <laughs> but like, DJs always be saying that yeah, shit. Man, like, what? Like, you know, Missy, we always told you it was a song away. There you yeah. go. You got it now. So, like, I kind of ran with that, man. I did that song last year. Okay. Yeah, and it just, it, it's growing legs right now, man. It's super, super growing legs. I've been hearing it in, in clubs and stuff that I don't even function in, like, with DJs I don't know, you know. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I think this is one of them that's going to do what it's supposed to do that's what's up man. that's what's up yeah man. i like the record it's hard bro i mean as soon as it starts it's like you come in blazing you Gas. feel me yeah no no uh, no no brake pedals at all you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah right on man I, and I, I also made it where it was like when i was writing i'm like i gotta be back to back to back bars it can't be no kind of lead-ups i mm -hmm. want everything to be a quotable in this song you know what yeah. i'm saying and and that's how it just worked out man it's one of my better written songs you know what i'm saying yeah okay yeah, that's hard bro so uh the beginning of 5280 mystic man um real quick man for those that for those that don't know um once again you from denver man um what part of denver did you grow up in man what area and then um part two when you came to arizona mm -hmm. what area did you move to and currently reside at um I'm, okay, so Denver, I'm a Montbello baby, real five five. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody from fifty fit, the fifties and forties. Everybody from Montbello, uh, my neighborhood made me. You know what I'm saying? And where's like, that in Denver? Montbello is northeast Denver. Northeast Denver, okay. Yeah, northeast Denver. So shout out Montbello, my whole neighborhood. I moved here from Georgia, and I moved directly to the south side, right on baseline. You know? Okay. And I like originally when I moved here, I didn't know shit about Arizona. I, I didn't even know it was black people out here. I was kind of like. <laughs> contemplating being here for like three four months to get myself together because mm -hmm. my my georgia story is crazy we'll get into it but yeah my georgia story is nuts um moved moved to south side and then looked around on my surrounding like oh there's a lot of niggas out here man so like start tapping it with the music i was on the radio first three weeks i was here you know so okay. i was like oh yeah i'm here you know what i'm saying yeah, so like that's hard so like yeah az's been really really dope to me now i mean i'm in uptown you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where where ain't no where ain't no worries at. <laughs> okay. Shout out to Uptown man. It's a nice area over okay. there, man. Yes, sir, man. So um, real quick, man. So what's the difference between like the scene out here and in Denver? 
real quick. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'll be real with you. Like, me and John Blaze talk about this a lot because we, we kind of, like, shout out to uh, Southwest Alliance. We kind of working mm-hmm. right now to merge both of the scenes together. Mm-hmm. Shout out Respect the Underground, too. Yep. Like we uh, Salute. Salute Justice, John Blaze, everybody, DJ I, everybody that's working together to, DJ K-Tone, everybody that's working together to make the Arizona and Phoenix scene kind of one because we all the Southwest region. Mm-hmm. It's the difference out here is and out there with us in Denver, it's kind of like, and it's going to sound weird. It's AZ kind of, kind of has a sound to it. You know, like I can kind of tell when the artist is from AZ, you know, mm-hmm. just from working with all the artists out here in Denver, you can never, you might like, and from Denver. That's crazy. Like, we got a classical, like, Denver sound, which is kind of like the Bay Mob area-ish. Yeah. But, like, Denver is like Phoenix a lot as far as, like, the politics of the music scene. But, like, Phoenix, and this is no disrespect to Denver, but Phoenix is moving so fast toward... We going crazy, for sure. so fast toward the mainstream of it. Like, like in Denver, we got, like, the AZ way too active with Denver would be, like, street nerd radio. Okay. Like, but, like, for instance, the difference is, like, Arizona got like a whole Arizona hip hop festivals and mm-hmm. people come together. It's all the artists in Phoenix and all the artists from Tucson and the Denver artists all coming here to do shows in Denver. Man, that should be a shootout gang. We can't even like we can't even like do that. Like we working mm-hmm. on it. It's coming together slowly, but like we don't have that yet to where like we have a pioneer like shout out justice because mm-hmm. we don't have the pioneer of a, of a person to say all right. Everybody, I'm gonna put together one event for everybody. I'm gonna have to do that. Sheesh. But, uh, I heard that. Let's you know, do it. I, you know, call Denver Music Festival coming soon. Uh, for real. But uh, <laughs> we don't have that yet to where somebody makes us all unify for a weekend and, and just say, hey, we all here is, as Denver artists. It's always like so clicky, like, he don't fuck with me. He don't fuck mm-hmm. with me. These are the elite artists. Like, Phoenix is like, bro, I've worked with some like me being new here like rest in peace trap house i remember trap house was one legendary. of legendary legend bro and he was like bro you gonna work with Pop. and i didn't realize how big he was in the mm-hmm. black family and then like debo lotties and like riley bloods and stuff and they all from different areas and walks of life but you'll see them all working the face and then you'll see them all yep. working together mm-hmm. denver you don't see that Okay. No, I'm, I'm, he's from over there. He's not working with him over there because mm-hmm. just the politics of the streets. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Denver got a little growing to do it before we mm-hmm. can get to the unity part like Phoenix got. Okay. That's the difference, really. But there's some talent out there, I bet. Major talent, man. Shout out shout out AP, Trev Rich, Trace Chapman, Ray Reed, mm-hmm. uh, Project Nay. Uh, man, there's going to be so many people mad at me. Like, you didn't miss. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it, what's up, though, man. so many people out there in Denver that's – and that have made some major moves, man. Like, we got Trev signed to Cash Money Records. and Really? Yeah, man. Okay. Trev, you know, that's my brother, man. We started music together. But, like, we've had AP selling out the Bluebird by itself what, with, like, hundreds of people in the crowd. Like, that's one difference I can say about Phoenix. If you're not, like, futuristic or a couple of these artists that's out here that's been putting it down for a minute, mm-hmm. I don't see them selling out big, big, big venues by themselves. Mm-hmm. We have a couple of selective artists in Denver that do that. They will sell out really? the entire... Travel Travel bring 500 people through the door with no, with no problem. You know what that's I'm saying? That's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm trying to get some of these artists out here to do. Like, man, put y'all on... Shout out AZ Way Too Active for having one yes, of the dopest sir. venues for these independent artists. Man, I'll be telling them, hit y'all up, book the, book the venue out, get a couple of your homies to open up for you and sell the tickets out, man. Like... Pack that out, you know, mm-hmm. and and we just try. I'm trying to really pioneer that too, like the independence of artists really putting on their own shows. Like mm-hmm. Denver has that for sure. Okay, you know, fair enough, man. That's what's up, man. Y'all book with us, man. Like he said, man. Fast. Appreciate the love for sure. I'll talk. Um, so you said when you got out here, you was on the radio in three weeks. Mm-hmm. Who did you? Uh, who are some people that you tapped in with? Like, as soon as you got out here, like, who did you fuck with? You know. What so I mean? my story with that is uh. My cousins is real popular because they were strippers. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but uh, they linked me with uh, Captain Hook, which Captain Hook walked me right to Poker Face. Like, he got the hit. Okay. I had a song called Neck Brace Music. And okay. um, Poker Face was like, yo, this is a slap. It's a, it's a big artist out here. He's been one of y'all bigger artists for decades. I'm not going to name his name. But he said, I don't have the Arizona sound, so he wouldn't put me on 
Is it 98.3? I ain't gonna say his name. You know, I think I know. Ninety eight three, uh, one of one point one, the beat at the time. It was ninety eight point three, one of one point one. Poker facing them. He was running that. Instantly time. showed me love with B Locker. Yeah, bro. I was on B there Locker. very quick. He was in my video, all that. So like, yeah, yeah, that's who I tapped in with, and it's been love since. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up, man. Yeah. Shout out Poker Face, man. He's my legend. Legend out here, man. We had him on the IG live show, so. My um boy. yes sir man and then you was recently at the um southwest alliance auditorium event mm -hmm. in denver. denver yep um how was that experience and, and what does an artist have to do to, to get there and what can they expect when they go there okay so uh networking wise i picked up so much game and when it comes down speaking to arizona artists and denver artists if y'all ever get see anything like that you get a chance to like go to it it was like free to sign up and go, go mm -hmm. to it. Like it was so many artists in there that I seen that I was surprised I was there, but it was a lot of artists I was surprised that weren't in there. Mm -hmm. And the experience of getting to network with those kind of people and and meet those kind of people and them have them have you first have them firsthand tell you like, hey, if you want to put a single out successfully or if you want to reach more people, do this. It was dope, and I seen a lot of it, like John Blaze popped up. I'm like, damn Arizona, <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, we in there. Yeah, man. So and. Shout out my cousin Antonio. That, uh -huh. That's family right there. He uh -huh. went behind the Southwest Alliance thing. You know he he uh put he put together something special, man. And then we did we did the concert. You know right afterwards, and um, me and Sizzle shut it down. Of course, you know Big Doobie was there shutting it down. Okay. C O E Yante. All right. You know it was it was very 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 fire. You know Sir Will. Um, a lot of the out of town artists I, I see out here every day. I seen in Denver, and that was amazing bro you know what i'm saying nice so that that event was fire super that's fire man hell yeah that's what's up man yes sir man if if y'all are artists man um be on the lookout for that next year man or or this year if they doing another one that's a great networking opportunity if y'all need any information on how to get down with southwest alliance and how to get on those conference calls bro we had i, had, I was on one of them conference calls and jermaine dupree popped up on the scene wow so many big artists and big djs and big record execs pop up on them calls Wow. Tap in with me on Instagram and I'm going to link you in on God. Mm -hmm. you That's know? what's up. Yes, sir. You heard the man. And speaking of big artists, man, um, I want to get into some of the people that you've worked with, some big artists. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you mentioned earlier living in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, doing research on my own. And if y'all go do some research, um, y'all will see that this man has worked with uh, Waka Flock of Flame. My boy. Uh, Boosie Badass, you feel me? Um, Filthy Rich, Filthy and you feel me? Filthy and Mozzie, <laughs> you feel me? Filthy, real, real crazy politics, but I don't work with both of them. Yeah, yeah. man. Mozzie so, one of my um, favorite people. Mozzie, man, free Mozzie. Shout out to Mozzie. Free Mozzie on game. Um, so tell me uh, about that experience, man, or experiences, and then um, you know your Georgia experience. You know what I mean? I'll start off with the Georgia thing because it kind of leads me to where I'm at now. Okay. Um, okay, so I left Denver in 2010. And when I went, mind you, I've been back and forth from Georgia to Denver for a long time, from Savannah to Macon to Riverdale. and Just back and forth. Just my stepdad was in the military. So, like, mm -hmm. I was in Fort Stewart and Hinesville and just moving around, bro. So, like, in Georgia... When I went to Riverdale as an adult in 2010, I was uh, I was in school, you know, and uh, going to shout out to Atlanta, uh, Atlanta Institute of Music. That's where I learned a lot of my game as far as engineering from and production. Um, met my producers I've been working with for the past 13 years today um, there, you know, and um, I met a cat. Riverdale shouted from he was from Brick Squad mm -hmm. and uh man man sitting and I'm, I lived in Riverdale so I'm start tapping it with Waka rest in peace Mario Slim Duncan uh just woo woo the kid uh all the cap all the all the, the Brick Squad artists and that's a it's a crazy backstory because that was so icy and because of Hit Squad which was walking yeah. them they changed it mm -hmm. to Brick Squad yeah I watched that whole thing happening in front of my face and uh i did a song with waka called party girl with me him riverdale shot in uh, in the all-stars which was my rap group at the time okay and uh that's how i got tapped in with them and um i used to sit in the studio with 
with Scorp Diesel and we used to I used to work with Sire the Kid a lot. That's how we I got okay. tapped in with Slim Duncan and um man, just, just being around them cats and just uh engineering and writing. I used to write sitting sitting uh drum drummer boy studio. Drummer boy and just write hooks for Jeez, the, man. And I, I heard that. Man, just sit, just write hooks. I had a situation where I had a song called Fender with Roddy Reb with uh Roddy uh Roddy Raw. He from Jersey. He was signed to Queen Latifah. Okay. Uh, we we had that record and um, Polo the Don tried to sign me. He, he tried. The deal wasn't okay. So me in hindsight, the deal wasn't in my best interest. But like, I had my producer turned it down for me, and I was hot with him at the time. But like, I understand it completely now. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that kind of catapulted me to like saying, hey, you know. You got the juice to do what you need to do, so mm -hmm. keep going with music. You know what I'm saying? Cause coming from Denver, I never seen that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So like that happened to me, and then you know, had working and engineering and writing for people and stuff. It was dope, but like on one end, you'll be like, you'll be like, all right, I'm doing the music shit, but. Writing for T Boss, shout out to my sis T Boss from TLC. Wow, that's like my, that's like Whoa. big sis used to eat Thanksgiving. Man, shout out to KT for even linking that up for me. Man, I don't produce records and wrote records for her brother Carnoy and for Sound Man. History deep with with T Boss. So mm -hmm. like, on that end, it's dope. But when I go home, my house is the trap house. Mm -hmm. So like, it's real gangster where I live at. Rip, shout out Riverdale, man. Mm -hmm. Like, like we three hundred two seven four. You already know, man. Like we, it was real gangster over there. So like. It was a story, bro, like, and I'll tell you, like, I'm not going to get to the specific details, but my homies mm -hmm. tried to go do a robbery, okay. and they went on foot because they was impatient waiting for my other homies. Mm -hmm. So they all left, came back. One of my homies had a bullet in his leg. These fools, he wasn't supposed to be in Georgia because he was on probation in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. They put a spoon on the stove and stuck that shell in his leg. And I watched it happen twice. Damn. Man, I was gone the next week. I said, oh, hell no. Y'all doing too much. Sheesh. Man, I got up out of there. And that's how I yeah. ended up in Arizona. And so when I got to Arizona, I had been living here for about good four years. I was homeless, bro. Mm -hmm. And living in, uh, shout out to Freeze TV. I was living in Freeze TV studio, running his studio. Wow, and, okay. And, uh, and I, I didn't, I was like, I got to do something because I don't. I'm fucking broke. You yeah. know, I don't I don't have anything. I you know, I'm not working a job no more because I just can't I can't cut it. Like me mentally I couldn't mm -hmm. I could I didn't have the discipline for it. So like that's just me being honest, I don't I didn't have the discipline for it. So like I, I was like I gotta learn how to make beats or something because that's where I they paying for studio time but like I have to do something else and so like I know the sounds, I know the melodies, I know the rhythms, I don't know the software. Mm -hmm. Learn how to do the software, I learn how to I learned music theory, how to key beat, how to key eight oh eights and stuff. Okay. Got my first placement with Trey the Truth like three months after I started making beats. Really? With Trey the Truth? Trey. Yeah. Sheesh. Shout out Trey the Truth. Shout out Walt Nice for that too, because Walt Nice really plugged that for me. You know. Maryvale, Walt Nice. Yeah, Maryvale, Walt Nice, my boy. You know what I mean? But uh Trey the Truth, the, the T S F soft swalker in them, they really? G Hustle. Okay. My second placement, you know, and um it was just an extremely dope experience for me, and I started making money off of it, and I started noticing, like, this is the way to go. You know, yeah. rapping is dope for me, but mm -hmm. I'm not making no money rapping yet because I don't know how to, yeah. you know? So uh did that, and then Mozzie came through the studio one day just being out here, and niggas was 100 deep in my little studio, and uh I didn't even do that beat originally. My partner, Sav, shout out Sav, uh, Savvy Davis Jr., that's my producer, he made the beat, and I remember sitting in the studio record Mozzie and just he's a cool nigga man he you know gave me his info I then I mixed the record for him and Rockstar 2800 okay shout out Rockstar shout man out Rockstar too Rockstar and then I ended up remaking a beat for Mozzie that him for him and my dude King Ratchet okay. shout out Chevy and King Ratchet that was dope and that's how I got the Mozzie placement and work with him and I you know just running into him he still remembers me like that that dude is extremely dope mm -hmm. then um after that I moved into my own studio, and then that's when the, the placement started happening. Uh, Filthy Rich came through, mm -hmm. and uh, he did a song with Rockstar, and I tapped in with him and did beats for him. Boosie came out here. was He was in HKS studio. Shout out, Brian. Yes, sir. Um, and it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm living in my studio still because I still yeah. ain't got it together, but I got my own uh -huh. studio. Yep. 
me and my girl sleeping on a futon and I get a, I get a FaceTime. It's like three in the morning. I pick it up and it's boozy. Wow. Now, I think I'm dreaming at this point in time. <laughs> I think I'm tweaking. I smoke a lot of weed and I, I'm like, no, nah, wake the fuck up, bro. <laughs> and he like, hey, man, they playing my beats. And I got a video. They playing my beats in the background. He like, it's shit hard as hell, man. You need to see me like, send me some beats. But don't do me like you do these Phoenix niggas. Send me like 30, 40. <laughs> Been sending Boosie beats ever since. That is a solid really? nigga, man. He hopped on my Sheesh. beats. Killed it. Um, That's solid. Yeah, man. Him, Sada Baby, Rio the Young OG. Uh... Man, I got so many. Pla- I got a list of placements that I don't, but people I don't work That's with. That's some yet. big names right there, man. Yeah, just I don't did beats for some of everybody. So, like. That's hard. Yeah, me really, like, being homeless launched me into a whole different kind of person. Mm-hmm. And it made me who I am today, bro. I, I, I appreciate, it's a beautiful struggle, bro. I appreciate that shit yeah. so much. Like, if, I, if it was handed to me and I didn't have to go through none of that, I would have never even started making beats, bro. Wow. But I just did one for, uh. What is it? Pablo Skywalking? I think that's his name. He he an artist that's doing pretty big shit right now. Too. Okay, I think I heard of him. Yeah, Pablo, mm-hmm. he he doing this thing too. And um Trev Rich, of course, mm-hmm. Sire the Kid. Yep. Uh man, I got some records with so many people, I forget it sometimes, man. But like Yeah. Uh, just a lot of people. <laughs> that's hard, yeah, man. That's man. dope as fuck, for real. Yeah, man. So that was my journey into production and how I, uh-huh. I got where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? That's dope, man. That's dope. And uh, also for all y'all out there in the music industry, man, you know, that's that's trying to figure out what you're doing, whether it's artistry, being a DJ or whatnot. There's so many different avenues that you could go Facts. to make money, you know what I mean? Facts. And, and network and really make a name for yourself in the industry. Try you something. If I mean? it's not working, try something new. You, you could be a writer, know. you know what I mean? Man, look, I, I know some niggas that write records. Oof. I know some niggas that write records that... uh that you'll never know who they are, but they don't wrote your favorite hits. Like, I wrote, <laughs> and this is a story I, I don't tell people too, E-40's record, uh, Choices. I was on the writing committee for that, that hook. Really? Everybody got Choices, bro. Yeah. I could check for that. Sheesh. Yeah. Wow. So, like, it's it's a lot, of, a lot, a lot of shit you can do out here as far as... Uh-huh. Yo, know, podcasting. If you don't, if you like to talk, but you don't know how to make money off of music and stuff, mm-hmm. try podcasting. YouTube giving out money. Oh, yeah, for sure. For real. Hell, yeah. So, like, I mean, you can go to the reaction videos. You can go into, I mean, like like you said, DJing. Right on, gang. I appreciate it. Like like I said, DJing. Uh, fly got me fucked up. <laughs> the, the DJing. The, um, anything, bro. Like, like. It sometimes you don't even gotta be able to like make beats. You could just program drums, and you can make a lot of money off of it. Like mm-hmm. you don't like working with artists, make loop packs and send them out to producers and let them niggas work with the artists. Mm-hmm. Just make sure your cuts right. Yeah. Like DJing, you you know writing for anything, bro. Yep. Just try something new and you never know what you're gonna like. Cause I you never know. What I was fuck making beats. I wasn't trying to make no beats. I got producers that make beats for me, mm-hmm. but the rapping wasn't working. And then me making beats really kind of led me to. A lot of people paying attention to me with the rap shit. Mm-hmm. They're like, you made. Are they like this shit cold? Who did the, I did the beat too? You did the beat too? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I need some beats. All right, he yeah. might not even fuck with me with the rap shit, but yeah. he gonna buy some beats from me though. You know. Mm-hmm. And en- try engineering too. Like that too. The engineers make the money before everybody do. Mm-hmm. Like even the producers. Like you gonna pay for studio time. Yeah. So like, they make the money first. Exactly. Try that. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. If you don't have patience, don't try that. And, but, you, and you never know who's going to come to your studio. Like this guy said. <laughs> I was just recording niggas. And Sheesh. I was like, oh, I make beats too. Yeah. You know, so like that's how that worked out, man. Crazy. Like, that's what's up, man. That's yeah. super what's up, man. So we're going to switch it, man. That's great, man. But let's get into uh, 5280 Mystic as an artist. You know yeah. what I mean? So we talked about the Broke the Mold record out now on YouTube. Um, I personally like No Balance too. Yeah, that's my, uh, that's my cut. You you shot that with Core Capital, my boy, which Cactus, is the homie, Camelor, Lord, man. Cactus Jack, you dig? Yeah. Um, is that like the main videographer you work with out here, or who are some other like videographers uh, that you worked with out here? And how how important is it to have good visuals? You know what I mean. My videographer is Nug Fate. Shout out to Nug, Nug Fate. Fate. He shot okay. Broke the Mold and, and Hello Baby, the single I got. That's about to be viral. Watch what I tell uh-huh. y'all. Y'all gonna, we gonna revisit this when Hello Baby drop. Okay. Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, 
<laughs> for real, for real. But uh, Nug Fate, she was talking about videos at him and Camera Lord. Camera Lord's okay. my boy. Mm-hmm. I tap in with him whenever I can. Anonymous Films did all my videos before that. Okay. Yeah, shout out them too. Shout out Charles and Reese from Anonymous Films. Okay. That's what's up, man. And that's very important. Like, the more important part, not just to having good visuals, but lock in with a videographer. Lock in, if you... Put it this way. If you do anything good to the artist, if you do any, you come out with a good product with anybody, lock in with them. If you found a producer that knows your sound, lock in with them. If you got mm-hmm. an engineer that knows what they're doing with you, lock in. Videographer that you like, he fits my vision. Lock in mm-hmm. with them. Like, and yeah. and work with them and build that relationship up. That way, y'all are. It takes less time when you when y'all know what the what the what the business is. Like building a relationship with new people. It takes time to build that chemistry up, but when you like, like my videographers, my producers, because I, I do got producers that make my uh-huh. beats too yep. outside of me. Those are they're really my friends. Like we don't build the friendship towards like I, I call these niggas about stuff that ain't got nothing to do with music. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, exactly. Yeah. Hey, bro, blah 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 blah. Like, yep. You know, make that kind of relationship with the people that y'all planning on working with because when you do that, like. It makes it seamless. Like they, when we lock in the studio, like a lot of my clients, because I still engineer, a lot of my clients come to the studio. I already know what they're gonna do. I don't even gotta ask them questions. When they come in, the session already ready. Just go in the mm-hmm. booth, you know, and it saves them time and and money because they can knock out five songs in a night mm-hmm. in a three four hour span because I already know how they want their songs to work. Mm-hmm. Instead of a, a you like, I don't know if this engineer right. You might waste your money with an engineer who's just he might not be bad, but he might not be for you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? True. Mm-hmm. So like lock in, man. That's important, bro. Make sure mm-hmm. that you don't cut corners. Make sure that everything you do with the people you lock in with is top tier. If it's not top tier, move on and find somebody else's top tier. Yeah. Real spill. Real real talk, yo, for real. Um, that's what's up, man. Shout out to Core, man. Nuck Fate. I've seen some of his videos too, man. Yeah, he's super he's dope. Ridiculous. He's ridiculous. Oh. Um, so yeah, that's super dope, man. And then uh, I want to talk about um, your DJ, man, DJ K Tone. Um, yeah, man, my boy. I I have not met him myself, but I've seen him out here at some events. Mm-hmm. You know, with you know RTU Southwest Alliance and whatnot. Um, and I've done some research on him on Instagram. Let you know. Him legendary dj in, out of denver man um what does he mean to you as an artist what does he mean to the denver hip-hop scene and uh you know how was y'all relationship man i just feel like this everything because like k-tone is k-tone's a staple bro like if you think of denver hip-hop if you think of k-tone you think of you know any of the older artists like i remember mnld in 95 96 and k-tone was they dj he was and they was just doing the biggest shit that I've ever seen happen locally because mm-hmm. we didn't have that. And K Tone was behind everything. He's the reason that Denver got the core DJs, you know, mm-hmm. like and a lot of reason, a lot of Phoenix got core DJs. Yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? Like like and when it comes down to the stamp of approval in the city, like I never do anything for like for like what's the word I'm looking for? For like For clout? You can say clout, but like ten, ten. to be to be like uh, acknowledged by somebody, mm-hmm. like I never, not even just recognition, but just like the cosign of like oh I do it to where the rappers can say I'm cool or the DJ. No, I never do. But K Tone is one of them people where his opinion meant the world to me when it yeah. came to my music. So like, like we just like he's always fooled me since I was I've been on K Tone for like fifteen years, bro. Yeah, but okay. he like. Okay, so he hit me. He's like, bro, I'm doing mixtapes again. Because K-Tone was the dude when it came to mixtapes. If you did a mixtape in Denver, if your shit didn't say, you don't even know who K-Tone is, it's irrelevant. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he hit me like maybe like seven months ago. I was like, bro, you, we need, we don't have a tape. We've never done mm-hmm. a tape. Give me 1500 for the tape. And I said, bet. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> bet. I yeah. started sending him songs. And he's like, you don't even got to send me nothing else. We about to blow up. Mm-hmm. and that meant everything to me and that really kind of like made me like take myself as a rapper more serious like if K-Tone fuck with it then I know what it, what I know what I'm working with you know what I'm yeah, saying okay. that's it was such a major a cosign a major mm-hmm. major 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 cosign that you know uh, 
and validation was the word I was looking for earlier. I don't do don't okay. do things for validation, but yeah, like yeah. K Tone's word is still to this day that shit means a lot to me. Like you know what I'm saying, and like now it's K Tone and Blaze. Like whatever they say, yeah. hey bro, this this will work, this won't work. I believe them. I don't. I'm very stubborn in my ways. Like I don't listen to a lot of people when it comes down to telling me yeah or nay or what to do with my music because it's always worked my way. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm listening to them. You know what I'm saying? Like. And so with him, that means a lot. Now we locked in, bro. Yeah. We locked in, and like, that's what's up. like, like, like that's my homie. Like he called me, like, bro, we got blah blah blah. blah. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, so like we we locked in, man. And it, it means musically, in my career wise, it means the world to me for real. Shout out DJ K Tone, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. We got to get him on the show too, man. Uh, on Easy Way Too Active, man. Whenever he's out here, that'd be yeah, he great. gonna be out here again soon, man. I'm a, uh, and I'm a, I'm gonna set y'all up for sure, for sure. Yeah, that'd be what's up. Whether it's an interview or on our live show, yeah, I'm that'd top. be hard. That'd be super dope. So, um, base is it Base Gang? Base Gang University, base man. Gang. Is that your record label? Uh, is that your crew? Explain it's, what that is. It's a lifestyle, man. It's us. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, with Base Gang University, and this for the artists, we are not a record label, and we are not signing nobody. So okay. please stop asking me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we started off as a production group. I, You know, like a Sav, Looney, D-Bang, C-Magic. Uh, it was such. It was a big group of producers. We cut it down short, a little shorter now because everybody's not on the same page. Shout out to them dudes, like, but everybody's not on the same page. So, like, mm-hmm. with me, I was, me and Sizzle, shout out my little brother Sizzle Fool, we've always been the artists from Base Gang University. We tried the group shit, didn't work out, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But, like, as far as we just kept it a production company, now it's one of them things where it's like it's a brand, it's a clothing, it's a beats, it's everything, bro. And it's like, we got the, even the podcast we got is, like that's a subsidy that's a subsidiary under Base Gang University, you know. Like we teach them how to do this the best, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. like, like Base Gang is really everything. Studio BGU Audio, like everything is Base Gang University. You okay, know what I'm saying? that's what's up. Yeah, man. That's super. What's up, man? Um, and then um, you got the project out. For what though? For what though? And he, and I'll be honest with you, that was just a surprise drop. But surprise drop. Go right. bang for what though? Because that's like the opening to Active and Overdue, me and K Tone's new album. Okay. This is the first y'all hear about Active and Overdue coming next month. Me and DJ K Tone going crazy. We got Broke the Mold on there. No Balances on there. Uh, just the interlude. Um. And the, the, the number one single, and we going to get into man, Hello Baby, man. Me and Project Nate, Hello Baby, mm-hmm. how you doing today? You want to talk about it? Bro, that, <laughs> that, that's going, it's going so, that's okay. going, we're going viral. Watch what I, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to say, hey, what I tell y'all. Yeah. You know, and that's DJ K's home song featuring me and Nate, but like, okay. yeah, um, me, I got Kelly Iris on the song, Hitman okay. Kelly. It's my boy. That's my guy right there. Yeah, Kelly, me and Kelly got two records on there, um. Me and Project Nay got two records. Hunter Rack Six from Denver, we got a record on there. Um, mm-hmm. And then my boy Mike Coates from Denver produced on there as well. And okay. me and Mike Coates and Sab produced the entire thing. Okay. And I got a record with K-Tone rapping on there too. Really? K-Tone the rapper too, man. Damn, man. no yeah, way. Yeah, man, K-Tone, man. He multi-talented. <laughs> so, like, yeah, that, that project is going to be special. I, I tell people, I put out a lot of music. This is my best body of work ever. You know, mm-hmm. like, and I and I, I strongly say this, and I don't give a fuck who gets offended. This will be the best body of work to drop out of the Southwest region in the next two years. Damn. Unless I drop another project out the Southwest region. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I feel that, that's how confident I am in this, bro. The, okay. The, the production's unmatched. I'm really, really rapping. Uh, the features did they thing they did yeah. you know how kelly get down man like yeah he's crazy man he's we, crazy we really we really went 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 all the way out for this project you know and the promo you're gonna go hard with the promo as far as marketing and all that too. oh yeah yeah we got some i got the man shout out to the core djs man we got core djs behind it we got the whole southwest alliance behind it mm-hmm. um we're gonna get az way too active behind it for sure for oh, sure yeah for sure man. um yes sir we got a, we got a lot of things that's gonna pop off with this uh and we, you're going to see it everywhere, bro. 
mm-hmm. everywhere. Like, and then we gonna we going to L.A. Shout out, man. Matter of fact, and I keep forgetting. Shout out ODM Slim. Shout out my dude Free Crit Mac. Man, shout out the whole the whole ODM team. Mud Game. We got L.A. pushing it too. Uh, you know, of course, Atlanta. We on. It's gonna be a lot of a lot a lot of push behind this, man. We like K Tone told me, and a lot of people told me, like, bro, this is the one that's gonna put you on. You know. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, y'all be on the lookout for that, man. Active and overdue. Yeah. Active and overdue. We like that because we AZ way too active. Yeah. Dig? <laughs> oh god, and we was overdue for this interview. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, so. facts <laughs> overdue. So like that history, man, is uh, we was chopping it on Instagram, mm-hmm. and then I seen you at one of our shows. Yeah, I, I like to come through these shows because it's, it's always it's always a wild yeah. one over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and uh, shout out Riley Blood for bringing me through here. Riley Blood, Debo Lottie, Maserati. My boy. Uh, shit. I think Young Faye, a couple, uh, a number of artists was telling me, like, yo, this dude is dope. Yeah, when I would man. say, who, who are some artists Who are some artists that you fuck with out here? Out here? Locally. Roddy they, Blood. They'd be like, no, no, no. When, they was, uh, when I was asking them, oh, they was, oh, I would ask it. them, like, yo, who are some artists that you fuck with out here? And, uh, you know, they would bring up your name a lot. And then that's why like, we started chopping it up last year, seeing you at the show. It's like, yo, we, we got to do it straight off of just uh, word of mouth and reference. I was like, I got to know bro's story. Off top, man. You feel me? Deep story, man. I, and like, a, man, it's more to it that I didn't even, that I ain't even got into, bro. Like, just mm-hmm. just even my, my Denver history, like, mm-hmm. for instance, in Colorado, like, as a youth, I was 15, 16, the only person in our age bracket me and Miracle Child, Colorado Miracle, we was the only ones that had a recording studio that wasn't $100 an hour that people our age can come record at. So we started a movement called the Box Boys. And the biggest artists from Denver right now all were Box Boys. Like, okay. We all started that movement. So, like, in Denver, uh, man, I remember my house got robbed from my studio equipment. My brother had died a few years ago, a few years before, so I was getting my ass beat in Denver. I ain't gonna lie, man. I, that shit was like mentally, it was strengthening me, but it was whooping me. And uh, I got a phone call like, let's let's make the box boys, blah blah blah. blah. From shout shout, they call him AP. Uh, mm-hmm. It's my boy AP, and Colorado Miracle called me. We put that together. We made one of the biggest movements in Denver history. And uh, from there, I've been a pioneer in my city with the sound, mm-hmm. with the engineering, with the look, with everything. And uh, I'm very well respected in my city for that, you know. That's what's up. Yeah, man. So That's hard, man. History go deep, man. And I was 07, 08, you know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. So you've been doing this shit for a minute, bro. Yes. I was a kid, man. My dad, child, my dad, DJ EJ, he's was one of the more known DJs in the city. And I've always mm-hmm. rapped since I was like five, six years old. So okay. Like, my first concert was a Criss Cross concert game. Really? You know Criss Cross? Damn. Jump, jump, Criss Cross, man. I, wow. I've been in this shit for a <laughs> long time, gang. So, wow. like, yeah, I, you know, and that that's really what made me, like, I got to do music. They kids, and they doing it, like, doing you know, it, yeah. so, like, I started trying to get my little rap shit together, and then, like, I think I turned, like, it was probably when I turned, like, 18, 19, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Fuck everything else. Yeah. You know, I used to build computers and shit. I used to just do it to have a studio. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. my mom thought, you going to build computers? No, I'm not. Wow. I'm, I'm going to do something with music. And, and that's how it's been working out. I ain't had a, a nine-to-five job in, like, eight years. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Just doing music shit. So, like. That's what's up, man. Yeah, man. Hell in yeah. me, not on me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It's in you. That's what's up, man. Well, uh, shit, man. We about to uh, wrap it up pretty soon here, man. Uh, you know, uh, let the artists know uh, if they want to get beats from you. You know how to contact you, man. What's the best, you know, way to get get in touch if with you? you? Want to get beats from me? Go to basegangotbeats.com. B a s s g a n g gotbeats.com. You know what I'm saying? Instagram fifty two eighty mystic. Uh, Twitter ban me so I can no longer go on Twitter. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter man. Yeah, Twitter damn. some shit. I and mean, the crazy part about it is, it's people real life doing porn on Twitter. I got banned for like some. I got banned for the stupidest shit. But like, yeah, I can't. I can't even make a Twitter no more. So like, mm-hmm. I'm banned for Twitter. So just hit me on Instagram, Fifty Twenty Mystic or TikTok. Same thing. Uh-huh. It's all centralized to Fifty Twenty Mystic. Okay. Yeah, man. And I noticed on Spotify you got two pages. Uh, 
what's the deal with that? Are you are you in the they're, process? They're of? they're extremely stupid, and they need to fix it. Like okay. I've been, bro, I've been complaining about that for so long. Like, okay. But me and K Tone, uh, we was talking about that too. We gonna get that together. I'm a, okay. I'm gonna contact uh, the people with Distro Kid and have them get rid of the one page and just merge yeah. everything. Yeah, got you. So yeah, because what happened was I changed my name to BGU Mystic at a time. Okay. And so they made a BGU Mystic page. And then when I made 52, I start uploading it under 5020 Mystic again. They uploaded to 5020 Mystic. Then I changed my name back. You know, and uh, shout out Daylight Prime, by the way. That's my boy right there. The Skirty, the man. Skirty King, yeah, yeah, man. Skirtis Blow, man. Skirtis uh, <laughs> Blow. <laughs> but once I changed my name back, then they changed the BGU Mystic to 5020 Mystic. So I got two now. Okay. So yeah, they, got, they just got to merge it. All right, for sure. Well, yeah, man. Uh, that's what's up, man. So uh, you hit him up if you need beats, man. Y'all, yeah. y'all heard his history, man. Y'all seen the artists that he's worked with. Um, tap in, man. Come correct. Don't please, reach out on no some on no weird correct. shit. Please do you know not come mean? in correct, cause that that that'll tarnish your name with me. And I do I I fire clients all the time. Mm -hmm. So please come right. <laughs> yeah, facts. Um, and yeah, man, let them know, uh, you know, what, what you got coming up. We kind of discussed it already, but what you got coming up yeah, and man. where they can find you once again, man. Yeah, man. 5280 Mystic, DJ K-Tone, active and overdue coming mid-March. Uh, like I said, hit my Instagram, 5280 Mystic, um, send a pigeon with a letter on his leg and I'm going to catch it. You know what I'm talking about? Like anything, yes, man, like just, <laughs> just, just tap in with me, man. You know what I'm saying? In any way you can. His stats, he'll, he'll link you. Hey, hit me. You feel me? We tapped in, we locked in. That you know part. what I mean? You already know. So I appreciate you pulling up, bro. My boy, I appreciate the interview, you know and I mean? appreciate AZ way too active, man. Yes, sir. It's been long overdue. But uh, on that note, it's your boy, Staz the Italiano, a.k.a. ESPN Staz, man, or whatever else you want to call me, you feel me? 5280 Mystic, man, in the building. Denver to Phoenix, man, Southwest Alliance. Shout out to everybody. On Southwest Alliance, RTU, everybody, man. We out this bitch. AZ way too active. Yeah.